Sarpedon, son of Zeus and Laodamia, Sarpedon, king of the Lycians, their leader against the warring Greeks, Sarpedon, faithful ally of the Trojans, Sarpedon, though a foreigner, friend of Troy, for whom and for his glory and his fame he fighting died. Zeus mourns the loss of his lovely son Sarpedon, killed by Patroclus, speared to the beating heart. Sarpedon lies dead in the dust, covered with blood. Many men were crowded around the corpse, like flies in spring, around fresh pails of milk. Seeing their fallen king stretched out in death, the Lycians held no longer and fell back. The Chians unbuckled from Sarpedon's corpse his shining arms of bronze. Patroclus gave the armour to his men to take back to their ships. Sorrowing Zeus sent Apollo down to the plain to reclaim the body of his fallen son. Swiftly Apollo descended the foothills of Ida and took the body to bathe it in the river. He washed away the dirt and blood and closed the gaping wounds with tender hands, perfumed the body, wrapped it in splendid robes, made clear the skin, and with a comb of pearl smoothed out the long black locks. With silken touch he arranged the lustrous limbs there on the river bank fresh and gleaming. The lovely Sarpedon relaxed in the arms of the god. Now he looks a handsome youth, a charioteer of twenty-five or six, calmly resting after a furious race in a golden chariot with the swiftest horses, having won the crowning prize and wreath. His task completed, tearful Apollo called to Hypnos and to Thanatos, the brothers sleep and death. He orders them to take the king back to his mourning kingdom, Sarpedon back to Lycia. They returned him to his country and laid the body at its palace door before the crying people. The funeral rites began, the lamentations and the pouring of libations from sacred cups, the dancing and the singing, the burning of the king. Later, master stonemasons came to erect the tomb and commemorative pillar. <laughs>